Hello and good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the Get Hired in Germany. And we're going to be talking to uh, two experts today who are going to explain to us some of the tips and tricks of the market. Uh, my name is Veronica Cancio de Grandi and I am the head of alumni relations uh, learning and development uh, for the EU Business School Network. I am based in Munich. And today we're having a panel with Mr. Ewald Manz, who is a partner at Rutgers uh, Bernstein. And he's based here in Munich and works with offices all over the world because they are an international company. Uh, Mr. Manz has been in the field for around 22 years and he says he works for brands at heart. That's what he does. He builds up brands and he designs leaders, which I think is interesting. And we're going to talk a little bit about. He's worked with Nestle, with 3M, with BASF, with Hasbro, and with the Disney company. So it's going to be very interesting. And we also have Ms. Yula Tronsberg, who is a specialist in people and leadership development and Infidian Technologies in Munich. Infidian Technologies is also an international multinational company, but based here in Munich before Ms. Tron. Transberg has worked at um, Flixbus and she has also been a lecturer at the University of Constance as well as a re research assistant. And she is passionate about the development of people. Uh, and both my panelists today are used to getting the most out of the, the people that they work with and develop and push forward. So from the point of view of business students, I'm sure that this is going to be a fascinating conversation Welcome both of you and good afternoon. If you will unmute yourselves, please. Thank you, Veronica. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good Mr. Afternoon. Manz, would you tell us a little bit about your trajectory and um, in, tell, tell our uh, listeners a little bit about your career? Yes. First of all, thank you very much so that so many people are showing up and uh, being interested what to do in the future which is a good sign. And uh, so if I remember when I go back, being the same age to our uh, audience, yeah. so uh, we didn't have a chance so much to listen to such uh, topics of today, and which is a great chance. But I, I myself urged everybody so that uh, uh, you pay a lot of attention uh, to people who have made the way up here, yeah? who have built up a career, who are um, brand leaders or managers today and um, have invested some of their times in studies and practice uh, work uh, to get up the way. And you made the first step. First, you, you choose an uh, international university, which is in nowadays crucial. And um, so, and we will talk later too on. And I hope that some of you are in, let's say, five years getting on our radar screens yeah. when you developed and you have had your first job. And uh, we will help you then to make the next change and step in your career. Ms. Transberg, tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. Sure. So I'm basically coming from the learning and development fields. I've worked um, yeah, several years now within people and leadership development, focusing on creating learning opportunities once you're on the job to really like continuously learn and make sure we enable the people in their roles to really succeed and what they can do and be yeah, ready for the future challenges they might yeah, face in their work environment. So I'm like creating learning opportunities for employees, basically. Wonderful. Well, um, let's start. Um, we're, we're talking about career paths and about being international, but let's start where we all are, which is Munich. So if, um, if you would, what is it about Munich that is making it such a fast growing city to look for employment in, for company growth and for startups? Either of you can start with this question. Ladies first, Julia. Ms. Transberg. 
I think um, from a very pragmatic perspective, one of the um, facts which makes um, Munich such an interesting point for comp growing companies is the international community living here, that we have a lot of like universities um, which bring in a lot of uh, people all over the world and a lot of talents also, um, which makes it very um, interesting for companies because they have um, the talents here. What I know from like companies located a bit more um, in outside areas or rural areas, they have quite a tough time to find these talents. So I think Munich is a very interesting place from this kind of perspective. And it's also um, now like comparing um, Germany, I would say this is my personal opinion, one of the most attractive city um, living in if you compare it with a city versus nature what like the life uh, quality it offers compared to other big um, companies which actually also attract a lot of um, colleagues or, or people um, from the whole world and which personally from my um, friends international friends they choose Munich first of all because of the life quality and then also of the international job opportunities. But as I said, this is my personal um, opinion, <laughs> not coming from the recruiting field and how I could maybe explain it. I'm very curious to hear what uh, Mr. Mr. Mons says uh, with his recruiting perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, On to you, Mr. Mons. Yeah, so um, I, I really can say that uh, if I look back in my uh, branch uh, field, yeah, so which is on one side, media entertainment. So once you have here the, the powerhouses of uh, content, yeah, so TV station producers, uh, studios, and uh, whatsoever, a lot of innovation uh, comes out of here. And um, if I go back in, in my career, I must say um, everything I've had done before. So I worked in Dusseldorf, yeah, uh, I worked in Frankfurt, and, and then uh, moved into Munich 25 years ago, yeah, and. Uh, so it's a bit uh, of, it's not such a hectic and, and impulsive uh, uh, town like Berlin and edgy and, uh, but it, it's a bit more, I would say quiet, yeah, in, in so terms, but on the other side, you have, a, a, as I said, a, a fantastic university, yeah, uh, besides yours. Uh, you have uh, also from the government side, you have a very good, uh, supportive and uh, for uh, what I mean, understanding the nature of growing companies. So therefore, if you look into Microsoft, yeah, in, if you look into Google, if you look into Infineon, yeah, and if you look to Siemens and so on and so on, it's really uh, connecting together or Audi building their worldwide uh, center here or IBM Watson and so on and so on. Besides that also production uh, companies. So it's so variety. Of, of, of different uh, industries, uh, which makes it very good. And therefore you should be as a, uh, an upcoming uh, uh, finisher of a study. So you should be very good yeah, to, to win the race, yeah, to get a place in here because everybody wants to be here. Um, because, and uh, what Julia said as well. So besides that, that you work hard here, so you can play nicely here because it's a, it's a nice living area you can commute easily yeah and uh, we have a lot to offer for uh, besides work yeah so from the beer festivals to the mountain hiking and uh, whatsoever and the whole tone in in the city if you compare it to others like london so and so on so on it's it's tough hard working but on the other side it's a bit of a um, yeah italian south feeling like barcelona or something yeah <laughs> okay, so now moving a little bit onto the, the future of work, but first, mm -hmm. starting from a from a local perspective, mm -hmm. from the geographical perspective that we were just discussing. So you, you mentioned Audi and IBM, we also know that Apple has just um, yep. invested a lot of money actually, mm -hmm. uh, right next to Campion, I believe where Infineon yep. is located. Um, and so BMW. BMW is here and we also um, the Munich community has a very strong startup culture like you Absolutely. mentioned with yeah. innovation yeah. so you said that Munich is not hectic and impossible like uh, uh, sorry impulsive like Berlin mm -hmm. and also it's not like London so how is it um, that you see Munich maybe 
the future uh, job market in Munich developing with this concept of since we're not hectic, there is a planning, there is, like you said, governments are very open to how business work and giving a, a lot of instruction I, I, as to growing companies and such. So where do you see it taking us in the next five to 10 years? It's in, in, in massive growing. So as I work very international and we're also transferring candidates from around, the, attracting candidates from around the world, yeah? So uh, I can really say that if we have an assignment where the headquarter is here in Munich, so it's very easy to, to attract people from, around, from South America, from Asia, from US and so on. Especially if family is involved as well, because it's also a very safe place. Yeah, you have a lot of international schools. You can work about, let's say, 50 miles around in a circle of Munich. We have a very good transportation and uh, commuting facilities, which is also important. We have the international airport. Yeah, and uh, so if I move people, yeah, if they are in the, in the, uh, uh, in the mode, or you can like in Finion, if you want to get a, a technology guy who just can do the best waivers and uh, you want to attract him coming out of Kuzong or uh, Sushen or whatever. Yeah. So I think Munich is very attractive yeah, for, uh, for the people. And, and that makes it even you have uh, the war for talent. You have war for uh, uh, for jobs, yeah, and war for housing as well, yeah. <laughs> All in a nutshell. Housing is another panel, completely. Okay. Um. But I think coming to your question, we will try to take this on as well. As we are going to have more remote uh, working, yeah, means also due that you are can you can commute to any place in the world or Europe easily. You can reach everything which in two and a half or three hours flight, yeah? So it could be that you are working in Barcelona or in Madrid or in Paris or whatever. And then you have maybe a two monthly fly, fly in for a personal meeting yeah. if necessary, yeah? But then how does that affect um... How would that affect things like um, language and culture? Going back, this past year has really changed the way that we are working, mm -hmm. the way that people consider jobs, the way that um, the way that people approach jobs, the way that companies employ, um, mm -hmm. approach employees. So today, everybody knows where we are. We are in a post or post the appearance of COVID world. And I would like to know how that has affected both of your perspectives, both for the people who are looking for employment, but later once they're in the companies, um, what the, the, the development of personnel who are no longer in an office uh, look like, or who maybe never come to an office, and maybe that's a little bit easier, but let's start from the mm -hmm. people who are approaching jobs. How have these changes in a post-COVID world have affected job seekers? Mr. Munz. Oh, okay, so <laughs> I'm Mr. Munz, Yuri. No, 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 it's, um, first of all, um, you sh you say yourself, you should uh, be flexible, yeah? So that's one of the key words, yeah? So uh, I think that the, we, we talk to the coming generation, our audience are the, the runners up, you know? So they are used to flexibility yeah that they're used to, to to be on in different places yeah and um it's not the nine to five generation yeah anymore yeah it's a 24 7 yeah so means so that on one hand you you need a, a certain community so i give you an example um last year i placed about 20 people so even in corona times yeah so uh because it was a challenging job, it was something to change. And so even I moved people around. So, and I was re really uh, humbled to see how many attention people in the companies pay attention to onboarding. Yeah, means that you have a pre-package about the company. Yeah, you have, uh, you have uh, like uh, mentors and teamings via Zoom or MS Teams or whatsoever, yeah. You have um, some people offered 
really fantastic um, made videos, yeah, showing them around. That's your office, yeah. Uh, some have also used virtual reality for that, yeah, which is which I find it's very cool. Yes, I would say it would be much nicer sitting with all you around in a in an auditoria uh, room, yeah, and uh, see each other and have a drink afterwards and so on, but. That's the situation. So we have to deal with it, yeah. And that's what what people learn, yeah. And uh, even um, ten days ago, I have uh, four people started their new job first of April, yeah. And they called me up and say, "Hey, wow, I got a fantastic welcome package, yeah. I got this and that. I have learned so many people within one week, which I would have not learned." If, if there was a, a regular start. So the start and to get into the company, it's, it's a bit easier and faster. That's, that's really my experience, yeah. And Ms. Transberg, in, insofar as once people come in uh, to the company, how has your perspective um, from a development point of view changed in your approach in the topics? Uh, maybe you've expanded something, maybe you've had to focus on something else. How has this past year um, affected the second step of that personal? I think we've seen a lot of changes. I think, um, first of all, the, the whole change of like, bringing formats which used to be like live as Mr. Mann said like we've been in an auditorium or like a face-to-face -face training to co convert those learning opportunities into virtual learning opportunities I think this has been the yeah biggest challenge we've seen in the learning learning and development area and I think now moving forward um this this trend towards more um flexibility also in terms of learning because I think the whole shift now to a bit more digital approach also offers a lot of flexibilities to workers um, when it comes to where they work, when they work um, and how they organize themselves and I think this also applies now to learning um, emphasizing more a self-directed learning approach which also emphasizes more e-learning, online learning or hybrid learning formats yep. where we have a part in an e-learning and another part maybe face to face but this could be also virtual or um, sometimes um, within in person let's say and we've seen this of course in all our learning programs mm -hmm. and we're also moving forward will kind of like stick to this flexibility because also people see the advantages of that flexibility mm -hmm. especially when it comes to learning you can learn on your pace yeah. when it fits to your schedule um, make a pause, apply mm. something you could not do in an uh, in-person training. So yeah. yeah, try to combine best of both worlds, let's say. Absolutely. I think it, therefore it, it's, I don't want to, to pre-optimistic, you know, so, but we are also in, in very interesting times. Yeah. So now you have really the chance have blended learning. Yeah. So look at upcoming startups at tech education technology is booming yeah so we have two clients yeah so who are going through the roof yeah and uh, that's key and coming to Julia's point we are for example we have um, we use uh, Hogan assessments for leadership development yeah and uh, usually the feedback uh, uh, meetings usually about two and a half hours yeah so we do now also via Zoom, which and it's and it's it's very good, yeah. So good interaction, yeah. Uh, and um, therefore, yes, it's hard to say. I think we have this time zone now, yeah. And uh, but I think if we look back, maybe next year at the time, so things being normal, yeah. And that yes. that's the beauty about it, yeah. No, no, normal. Everybody's talking about the new normal or what normal we're <laughs> going to go back to. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so going to be a new normal, a different normal, let's say, yeah. than we used to before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I would like to discuss now what we were talking about in this in this new normal, in this new you could be living in Barcelona or in Beijing and maybe your headquarters is in Munich. So I would like to talk a little bit about language now, um, and we'll get into the technical languages like Python and SQL later, <laughs> I'm talking about the, 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 the ones that we use to communicate person to person. So um, 
English, the one of the concerns of our students has a lot to do with German. I know, Ms. Transberg, that you recently, uh, previously you worked for Flixbus and now you work for Infineon. So from a big company point of view, can you talk to us a little bit about languages, the importance of languages, which languages right now for this market and your experience? Yes, sure. I think both companies are very international. And maybe I start with Flixbus first, because Flixbus, they really mm. like did the step, I think, in 2018 to declare their official company language as English, meaning that all the communication, there was not by um, in two languages anymore, like a lot of German um, companies would do um, German and English communication, but they really made everything available in English, which was um, I think a good step and also a good sign to the whole international community that it doesn't matter anymore if you speak um, German. It's also more inclusive um, that it's just clear this is um, the yeah, default language we speak. And I think this also pushed a lot that a very international team is working now for this company and enabled them to really bring in talents from South America, Asia, from a lot of different continents and working for them, relocating um, those people for their jobs to Munich and to start working with uh, Flixbus. They also have a big office in Berlin. So I think this um, was something we've seen. Um, we had it more the other way around that we had to enable German people to offer English classes um, and to really like, uh, yeah, it, it, it sounds maybe now funny, but they started working in a German company and then they switched to such an international company that we had to make sure, make sure we enable um, all people on the track and um, so therefore German courses and German was not a big issue at all mm -hmm. but more the other way around and now for Infineon I see you see it's a, it's a company with a stronger German history let's say from its um, connection to Siemens it, it's got founded also in, in in Germany but now growing over the last years it's becoming more and more international meaning all the communication is bilateral and it's, it depends on your task, but it's not um, required to speak German unless you work for a German market, uh, let's say marketing campaign or have German customers. But also from there, when it comes to development, engineering, finance, whatever function, it, it's not necessary. Mm. Also there, the language is, I've seen everyone speaking in English, but still you can see the roots are a bit more German still what I, compared to the shift if Flixbus just took some years ago, they uh, made it a completely international company. And I've seen, I think especially startups have it easier this way, they can switch easier or even new startups coming, they directly um, start a English speaking culture from point zero, so. Okay. And Mr. Mons, you said something, um, in one of our previous conversations, you said something that I liked very much, which was you said that language was very important as the key to the heart of the people that you work with and working in an inter and, and working for people in the international market, not just in Germany, but in, in every way. Could you could you elaborate on that a little more? Because I thought that that was very important. Yeah, I think it's. Um... Because language is, is something which is given, you know, the, the whole phonetic, the whole uh, uh, talk and whatsoever, even if we are all speak English here. Yeah. So it makes a big difference uh, how you speak, if it's a business English or not. Yeah. So and uh, on one hand, yeah, I think if you don't speak any French and you go to Paris, so you can get lost. Yeah. So it means that because people, I don't know, they are not so internationally. What I want to say is, I tried always, yes, I have worked very much internationally and even today, yeah. So I would not start uh, learning Mandarin or Japanese and I would always use them in a business term, dolmetscher. But if, you know, if you as an expat or somebody coming into a, a foreign country have a bit of an understanding of and the, 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 and can read between the lines and, and have the, the intersection wording behind it. Yeah. So that makes it more easier to, to connect. Yeah. And it's not uh, so, so I would say practical and mechanical like the business talk. Yeah. So it opens a bit of the, of the personality. Yeah. And, and therefore, I think it's um, uh, also uh, to, 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 to the audience, it's, it's very 
I, I could urge everybody have really more than one language. So the home language, English, yes, or Spanish, yeah, which is also word uh, or French. So the more the better, yeah. Yes, today, I think coming back to the audience, uh, most of them, they will run around in five years with, with their own barbel fish in the ears, yeah. And, and will translate it. That's that's coming, hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, but it's it's nice if you have also a, a, an understanding for the the, the body language yeah? and the, the the notions between it. It makes then the onboarding also easier. Yeah. So that's a follow what... so a follow up question on on that. Mm -hmm. We we are at a we are very interesting moment in our history where we are mm -hmm. simultaneously discussing a future in which we're all going to go to different places or different offices mm -hmm. in a world that is consolidating language wise. So is it um, is it advantageous for somebody like one of our students to come and study in, in, in Munich and get a feel for the culture, even if later they go to Japan, for example. And what are some of the things that you can pick up uh, while you would be here or would be in a culture as opposed to just learning it online? I think first of all, you get out and buy you a lederhosen, yeah? And uh, so, and- Or a dindle, uh, or a, or a dindle. dindle. Yeah. So, and- um, so you pay attention what's what's around uh, yourself, yeah. And uh, I think it's always um, open and the receptiveness, yeah. So what does a town do to you, you know? So and it's up to you to use it, yeah. And use the the nature, use the different uh, uh, meeting points, yeah. Use the nightlife and the clubs, yeah. Use the you can go, you know, within 20 minutes, you, you are in a totally different world. Yeah, Julia, that, yeah? if you go on the B13 up to, to Bartels, so you are in the, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah? yeah, so you have the cows and uh, you have the sheep and you have somebody comes around with, they're dressed up like a Bavarian, yeah, <laughs> because it's his working clothes and, and, and that's it, yeah. And uh, that's make it makes it so nice, yeah. And uh, as I said, I think it's easier to survive in Munich than in uh, in Soho or in Berlin, to be honest. But it depends on on your personal lifestyle. I, but I, if I would start in Europe, I would start in Munich. That's that's a great piece <laughs> of advice. And all these companies like Apple and stuff yeah. agree with you. Yes. yes. So now moving on, <laughs> now moving on to a little bit of um, development and continuing education. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the things that our students would have to focus on now outside of their normal business curriculum to some of the, the both hard extracurricular and soft skills that they will need for their careers. And I would like to start with Ms. Tronsberg, because we were we were talking the other day about these um, these focuses that our students should have in order to secure a future in the world of work. And um, could you talk to us a little bit about that, please? Absolutely. So I think, um, like, just putting myself in 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 the shoes of my of our audience um, when I'm now looking for a job and and um, imagine myself I'm like making myself ready for for my first career I I really would look into it uh, separate into hard skills and soft skills and I think hard skill uh, wise and I think you heard it hundreds of times but I think technology is evolving and every job even working in HR I can tell you from my own experience yeah. I'm working within HR and um, requires tech skills you will deal with IT if you want to continue working in a international and and a growing company um, and which wants to stay relevant still in the future so I really would um, recommend everyone to even though you might be in a first step, like not sure why IT, but look into those technical hard skills, even though you won't be a programmer to understand like 
what is the language of programming? How does it work just from a met, even meta level? And, um, and if you're in a stage that you already know which kind of like field you want to look into, look even into the specific tools, methods which are required in those jobs ads, in the job fields you're looking into, if there's already like, yeah, a request for a certain language, like at least on a high level, start looking into that and, and make yourself familiar with the vocabularies, the terms, even though you won't be the one in the end of the day programming, you will need to talk to people working with IT and it always helps to speak this language. Mm -hmm. So this is from the hard skill side, uh, something I would highly recommend and I would do myself and I'm still doing myself. I myself also did some programming classes just to be able to yeah, speak the vocabulary and understand the patterns. Um, and now soft skill wise, um, I mean, we've seen this with the trend, the whole virtual collaboration, like having this flexibility also requires your responsibility to organize yourself, to make yourself mm -hmm. familiar how you can organize yourself in such a digital workplace. It might be overwhelming to get all these messages, chats. I mean, you digital natives, I, I suppose that a majority of you, so you grow up in this world, but still, um, it's, it requires you a lot of self-discipline and there are a lot of tools out there to help you with that. So I would also look into the in new soft skills and um, looking at like resilience, stress management, time management, because we've seen this just like, and I'm working with it a lot, like looking into the skills in demand for 2021. And uh, one of the most growing skills, basically companies looking to providing more learning offers is resilience, is um, dealing with your emotions, stress, time management, because we also see that all these opportunities, technologies create a lot of like distraction or it requires your attention. And um, therefore it, it's very important to manage yourself in, in this hybrid digital workplace. So I would recommend yep. you to look into that as well. Mm. So soft skills wise. Okay. And of course, besides that negotiation, communication, also depending again on the, the job area you're looking into, if this requires more presenting, project management, um, but I think this is more from a general level, um, mm. something we've seen evolving over the time. <laughs> And from a job search point of view, Mr. Mons, how do you see how, how do you see this mix? Yes, I, I like what Julia said. So I think get yourself organized. So leading yourself and then leading others. So if you are not able to have your own uh, things ready, your own agenda ready. So we talk at the, the upcomers, you know, but it's it's here now. I, how to say it? It's you program yourself. Yeah, means if you are not structured yet, so really get structured. Yeah, and don't think I can do it later or whatever. So be structured, be focused. Yeah, uh, be clear and what setting your priorities. Yeah, um, not skipping anything. Things like oh, I do it later or whatever. So really keep focus. Yeah. It's nice to be multitasking talent and do everything in, in, in five uh, simultaneous things, yeah? phoning, calling, whatever, watching, binging and TV and so on and on. But make sure that you stay focused yeah? and have, have a clear plan. And um, don't wait before others come and tell you what to do. So tell yourself what to do. Yeah, and it sounds a bit of old style, yeah, but it's true, yeah, because otherwise, you know, if you're getting into a job, so it's it's changing, yeah, so the honeymoon is fast, more faster over than you ever think. And even if you come into companies, and I, lo I know Flixbus as well, uh, they have had uh, in their offices, uh, how you call it, the name, in a slide, you know, from one, isn't it, Julia? Yes. Yeah, the, so you the... can... Yeah. The, the, the fire slide, yeah? So the fi fifth to the fourth floor, yeah. The fifth to the fourth floor. <laughs> you have all nice things today, yeah? You have the kicker, you have a cinema, you have uh, somebody who comes to massage you in the office. But at the end, it's all about work, yeah? And uh, no matter how you do it. And if you've been organized, you are resilient, as you said before. If you're well good prepared, so you are ready to, for the future. And how does one, with all this preparation, mm -hmm. 
reflect it when approaching a company or even an executive search because for for example for the the, the hard skills the tech skills there are certificates there are levels mm -hmm. there are courses there are programs there is also the business degree that you get from an international business school but soft skills um, <laughs> maybe yeah maybe you can see my negotiation in in, in a conversation but then how do I demonstrate as a candidate my leadership capabilities as well as the fact that I'm proactive? Or what, what are some of the best ways for somebody to demonstrate this about themselves? I think that's what we do. So we really try, we can look into the eyes, yeah. So, but we have to try to read what's behind it, yeah. And um, I think in the level of candidates, we are uh, searching and placing like, Julia would be one, yeah, target. Uh, when we, we invite them for a personal interview, yeah, so, uh, you know, the CV I have read, as you said before, I make my, I say, oh, okay, so in international business education, fantastic, four or five practicas in different towns, bam, bam, bam. So then I read what he's done. Oh, am I overachieved every target? I doubled it up and the, the, the natural executive summary, yeah. But then when the talk starts, you know, it, I would say it starts even earlier. So if we make an appointment with, with the people, yeah, how they are responded, are they responsive in, or not? Yeah? Um, are they really self-organized? Do they know how to get there and where there? Have they really be prepared for this meeting? Yeah? Or not, uh, I'm here and now tell me what to do. Yeah. I, I would do it a bit, yeah. Um, but it means I would. I, I strongly believe if if you if you self being very well programmed yourself, you be authentic, you know. And authentic means so that you then explain your way of uh, uh, through your career in very authentic ways, you know. So it's, it's, it's a dialogue, yeah? And, and then you can feel it and you can prove it, yeah? And um, I'm always interested hearing like how people not talking only about their success story, about things, what have they learned, you know? So when they have a move, which was not the right move, so what have they learned out of it, yeah? Or if they have studied uh, maybe medicine and ending up at, in the music business, yeah? So it's not a failure. But what have you learned? What is it? Yeah. What on your journey and stuff like that. And some, and therefore we are using, I think as you, as Julia as well. So we are using these psycho psycho psychometric uh, things like Hogan assessment and stuff like that to dig a bit deeper because a lot of things are already there, you know? So they are on your inner PC. Yeah. And uh, but now you have the chance, you are all young and uh, you are motivated. And uh, so make the right decisions, make the right choice. And uh, I think come to Munich and everything is fine. <laughs> we have a, so we have a, a question from the audience and yeah. it's going back to something that we mentioned earlier about working remotely. Um, are there any particular fields in which working remotely is not compatible from your experience. So we know right now that most are based on our previous experience, but which channels do you think are not very, um, are not very working from home friendly? That's one. And two, how do people, um, how do you think people are gonna navigate uh, the future? Because we're looking at people who are gonna wanna work from home or people who are gonna wanna work from the office versus companies who want people to work from home or want people to work at the office. And how do you, how, how do you see us navigating this new opportunity which also causes more places for people to not be on the same page? Um, Mr. Month, go ahead and start. I thought Julia, because she's- uh... Then Julia, please go ahead and start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from, um, okay, where to start? Like with, I think it's a it's a culture question because what I what I see also exchanging with other companies, um, there there's different extremes to it. There, right? There's some companies who have it really ingrained in their culture to be like a 
on like in the office culture and they still even during the pandemic times kind of like stick to it as as long as possible and I've, i also know that they will kind of like be back to this culture after the like moving forward and there are other companies who already switched to a remote first culture or a remote um they have different names to it so i think it is something um which will be maybe in the employer branding something um people at, at companies use to to yeah attract the candidates they're looking for because they're like they're different preferences there are others who really prefer to work um on site or mostly on site there are others who want to have these flexibilities or a lot and i think this is what i've seen in those questionnaires um with flix and also the company i'm working right now a lot of uh, prefer the in-between hybrid approach mm -hmm. that they have the flexibility so i think not 100 percent on site i think no one oh, no, uh, uh, not everybody wants to go back full office because it's it's hard um after like having like proved it, it works for a year to really tell your people to be there every day um, but certainly there are jobs which requires more um, being there in the office where I would come back to your first part of the question which I think are jobs um, where you need tools because they're so complex um, and I'm thinking about BMW um, mm -hmm. where you have to run tests or a certain technical environment which you just cannot replicate in your home office um, and where you have to measure things and, and be there. So I think this would be an example or yeah research where you like if you work in the chemistry fields or something like that just which just requires you to be in the laboratory and if it's more operational to keep business running or certain things which you have to be in the fab for and i think our audience here is probably coming from business school a lot of jobs um, should be um, doable in, in this area in working remote is it marketing finance business development all those roles and i think the majority of our audience here today are looking for those jobs and roles they are also leadership they are um, from my perspective what i'm seeing um, should work remote mm -hmm. yeah. okay yeah. if um mr Mans, did you have something to add yeah, I think that, thank you, Julia, so that you go first. And um, it's right. I think it's, it, first of all, it's also a chance for uh, a lot of um, uh, companies that they can get attract talent now with remote work, you know, means so that you have not to move from Hamburg to Munich, yeah, uh, and you can stay in Hamburg and uh, work and um, together. In, in 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 via remote yeah as i said before some days you are then physical but i would say hmm, if i have a crystal ball and look into it and everybody's vaccinated yeah so and it's really everybody has his uh, whatever uh, vaccine pass on on the iphone you know you know we still are all humans and we like to be together with others yeah and uh, maybe there would be a, a hype, yeah, that everybody <laughs> wants to get back. I don't know, but depending on, on on other things as well. So it depends. For example, if you have to commute every day two hours, for example, yeah, from Augsburg to Munich, or from Deckendorf to Munich, or from Ingolstadt to Munich, and or from Rosenheim and whatever around, and you think, hmm. Why should I sit in the at six o'clock in the train, yeah, or in the car? This could, you know, that's that means mid flexibility. Could be that you say, ah, if you work so far outside, so you start to come to the office half day, yeah. So at ten o'clock, for example, yeah. And um, but this flexibility is a must. But coming back to Julia's point. Some people want to get to the office because it gives them structure. It gives them community. Yeah. It's give them its routine. Yeah. Means that you, you make your coffee, you get with your mug, you sit in, in the, in the train, you listen to your famous book. Yeah. So, and you, you talk, you come to the office and say, ah, oh, hello, Veronica. Hello, Julia. Hi, Iris. And, and, and whatsoever. So you surrounded by your, your friends 
yeah, uh, who, whom you can talk to if you are not such in a good mood, yeah, and uh, you can say, ah, I have a great idea. What about this and and that? Yeah. So therefore, I think uh, as long as we are not machines, so there will be place for for offices and the office structure, <clears throat> as I said, um, will be different. Yeah. And uh, I think it will be. And that's also interesting. So for the new work means how make it attractive there. Yeah? So have flexible times um, where, you, where do I offer a meal or not? Yeah, or do I do this and this? Because, and I would, ourselves, we have in Munich, we have uh, 20 people in the office. Yeah, So we don't force to go back. Yeah, But they come by nature, but it means five people a day it's the same with you julia yeah so you can go to the office if you want if everything's safe but i think it's um and um even you see it in the us yeah so i think the us though so they the more they vaccine yeah so more the people want to get back to the office it's interesting yeah absolutely yeah i, I could i couldn't agree <laughs> more with what, what, what was you said um yeah we're human beings and and yeah. i think enjoy the flexibility of having that but now being in a situation of like full um full-time home office people realize the benefits and and uh yeah. yeah how nice it is to have the structure come back and also the social piece mm. um yeah so earlier in this comment uh mr Mons, you said that you know, there, there will be, because of this remote work, it will attract more talent. But if it attracts more talent, that means that talent pools are going to get bigger. Yep. And so how, how does that impact people who, you know, people who are searching for a job? Because if we expand the market internationally, that means that there are more candidates. So how, yeah. how would you um, advise somebody navigate this? larger pool especially for our international students hmm. i must say it's um interesting enough when we had the uh, economic crisis yeah uh, a few years ago uh so we got a lot of lot of applications out of spain uh, out of italy out of south america even us yeah so wherever there was uh, economic downscale and um so I would say if you are, first of all, you should stay top of mind what's going on in the respective countries. Yeah. So what are, what are the hot topics? Yeah. So make yourself interesting. Yeah. So searching the market for who are the, the, the top companies, startups or uh, emerging markets in, in, in Munich, for example, and surrounding. Yeah. So um, having, and that's come back to, to data and research, and you can do this today uh, easily. So what are the openings, uh, all the openings in my field? Yeah. So you will find that there have been, been thousands of openings which, which are uh, attractive enough. Yeah. And then you have to make yourself your choice. So do I apply for the job or not? Yeah. And if you apply for it, it's, um, it always should come back to what value can you add yeah so what benefits are you bringing with you then it's your international mindset for example or your experience you have gained in another industry which are developing here yeah um, or your uh, uh, um, uh, uh, knowledge you have in a certain uh, field yeah and so on, so on. I think it's, uh, I would not say it's, uh, good people will always find a job that's too easy to set, but it, it comes back to your own planning, you know? So you you, you should today, you, the people, the companies aren't researching for the candidates. That's the later stage. Yeah? But nowadays, if you are starting, yeah, I would say if I look into the openings, yeah, which are it's huge, yeah. So in, in Munich, so if you go onto the Indeed, the Stepstones, and the corporate websites, they are bang full of um, uh, job inquiries, yeah. So when approaching all these larger job inquiries, um, mm -hmm. Julia, 
you, when we were talking the other day, you talked about a process that our, that our students could follow, follow to, and to improve their skills and to see what kind of skills they were missing. And that had to do with going back to the job and uh, to the job ad, sorry, very specifically, the text of the job ad mm -hmm. and making an analysis. Would you go through that for us, please? Yes, absolutely. So just like coming from how we develop learning programs, I thought like you can like the processes we go through as a people as with the people development in the company, you actually can apply that process when looking for a job outside of company. So and it, it's called like it starts with uh, setting your learning goals really. And for that, you can use a job ad or a job field you're interested in and really be very honest to yourself, reflect yourself on one of those skills you might um, need some more impulses, some more education, some more training. And, and I think um, this yeah, has to do with a lot of self-reflection to identify a, we call it skill gap, but in, in a positive way of like closing it and make sure you, you fulfill all the requirements. And once you identified that skill gap, you define um, the goals you need to achieve to fill this gap. Like what is it what you afterwards should be able to, and then we really look into um, learning offerings, how you can close those skill gaps. And this can mm. be as easy as starting with Googling it uh, on a high level for what is there as a open online course. Um, mm -hmm. th there are a lot of MOCs, there are nice, mm -hmm. nice podcasts, TED Talks. I mean, there's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And then really of a high level, realize what is it what you need um, to do it so before jumping into a three month um, course I would rather recommend you to to do like a shorter course mm -hmm. 30 minutes to really see if this is the topic fills your gap before doing a certificate in Python or whatever so I think yeah. this is maybe a journey you could follow um, looking into all the online offerings and I just named some of that but if you just google into massive open online courses there's a lot of um great platforms like in coursera udacity yeah. edX, uh, with where renom um, really famous famous universities mm. offer their learning content and get to itunes you itunes you yes Stanford, and how yeah international if, if, business school exactly obviously but you know <laughs> We know that. No, but I, I think on, on coming back to you, so um, to your point as a university, so you should also have, that's great that you do things like that. Yeah? So that's really preparing for the future. Yeah, yes. Inviting experts, giving examples and so on and so on. If I go back into the early 80s, yeah, and uh, when I was trainee and uh, made up my mind which direction to go to and so on, I... Pub, I um, from my very light, tiny money, yeah. So I got the business magazines, yeah. So Manager Magazine and Wirtschaftswoche, like Time, whatever. You know what? And because what attracts me was the biographies of the leaders, yeah. So nowadays, this is all available, as Julia said, yeah. So you can screen LinkedIn the whole day and make up your mind. So, aha, uh -huh, what, what, what have they? For example, if you want to get CFO, or if you want to get a CPA, or you want to get a data integrated designer, whatever, just go on LinkedIn, check check out the best people in there, and what have their what is their career? How have they developed it? Have they certain postings? Have they had made any TED talks or uh, YouTube uh, 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 conversations and whatsoever? It's all out there. Yeah. That gives you also as a as a, as a very good guidance uh, for yourself, yeah. And then you can sit down and say, ah, okay, hmm, maybe it's better that I make one more in economics, or I spend more time the next uh, semester. It's about data. <laughs> then how would you balance being a generalist? which is more, so according to, to trend, maybe so, social trends that mm -hmm. students hear about when they're 18, 17, it used to be in, in the 80s, in the 90s, mm -hmm. specialize in something, go all the way, take the steps in the same path, as opposed to now where it's opened up a, a little more and what we look at, look at, look, 
look at a little bit of everything, know a little bit of everything. And how does one really, how does one really differentiate between generalist information or general information and when to know when to go deeper within that information? How does one measure that? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the, in the good old times, it was always said, you, 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 so you have to work at the bank or at an insurance company or at Siemens. Yeah. So then that's the, the lifetime uh, saver. Hmm. Yeah. It comes back to the point I made earlier. So it's a, uh, you should really listen to yourself, you know? So what, what's your inner compass saying, yeah? So, and um, yes, you should, it, and it depends if you are, uh, if you're not interested in figures and numbers, uh, yeah? So it doesn't make sense that you force yourself and uh, you have to be the best economic and so on. Maybe you are, maybe a better, you, you study film or uh, entertain, entertainment, yeah? You go to, the, to another, uh, education but it, it all came down to so having an open eye what's needed in the market and Julia said it before I would urge everybody to put a lot of emphasis into understanding interpreting knowing everything about data yeah and how to use it you have not to be a KI expert or AI expert but how to use it, how to interpret it and then do it. And you, you are fully right. Every job today we have is about this. I have to, you could be a good salesman, but you have to be able to use your tools you have. You could be a good marketer in HR. Yeah. So if you have uh, SAP success factor uh, for all other tools or workforce uh, or a WeWork or whatever, it's all digitized, yeah? So that's one of the, the key, key strengths. On the other hand, if you discover, and that comes back to you, which I said before, beforehand, use the time and do different jobs where during your study, yeah? Four weeks here, four weeks there, and so on, so on. Don't waste time too much on traveling or seeing how the world is going around. Try to be practical yeah, and see what works. And then, yes, things you discover with 20 are different if you're 25 and totally different if you're 30. Yeah? But they would, then it starts with the, the, the red line starts to emerge. Yeah? And then once you have discovered it, go for it. So you, so you recommend that students uh, do an internship or start working already while Super. they are studying? Super. The earlier, the better. Okay, I'm, well, a, I'm, a, I'm a great fan of fast studying. Well, then you, you and us were on the same page because every campus at EU Business School has their own career center. And we try and help that's, our kids get jobs and counsel them and stuff. So it's absolutely. very great for you to say that the better you get out and uh, get things done the better it is fantastic I absolutely agree and i think it helps you also to make the right choices moving mm -hmm. forward because the earlier you know what you like or don't like yeah. then you can like choose also to, like moving forward now in the learning direction mm -hmm. you would then discard maybe courses you would have not maybe yeah. you would have done okay. um without this experience so yeah. Also, not liking something as you expected helps you to then focus on something else uh, instead of like, yeah, dedicating time of something you actually don't want to work with. And so I, mm -hmm. I really agree starting as early and even like short internships as possible can help you to get these insights. Yeah, I think it's, every, everything is so easy said from all of us. Yeah, so but, I think, <laughs> <laughs> but if you in, in that certain time if if i hear myself saying what i have done in this time at 18 20 yeah so it was the world is open let's have party let's travel let's go to here and there so and uh, but had, today you can combine it you know so i think if you are um maybe you, you even you are so in the national school so you can talk to your alumni yeah so and when you say, ah, I have it, I, I go trip to Munich. So you not go for the beer fest. So then you visit you, the alumni who are here. They take you around. Maybe someone is in, in, in Finion, someone is in, in BMW. So please show me how you work here. And so the more, the better you are prepared for this, that you know what's later to do, 
the easier it is. Yeah? And it's less frustrating for yourself, your parents and friends and whatever. Because even I can tell you some of my clients, yeah, who I have placed, yeah, ask me, then, oh, can you not give advice to my kids so they are ready in one month yeah so and they don't they don't know what to do yeah so <laughs> um, wow well yeah I mean you're, you're you're kind of saying everything that we're doing because we do I am the head of alumni relations obviously so Super. you're speaking into my wheelhouse and yes. we do try and uh, bring our alumni back and make them visible for our students to know mm-hmm. who they are so that's so both the career center on every campus and a very strong alumni Super relations network and to close because we're actually up on time I wanted to ask each of you a question that is a little bit different so first I will start with Julia and the question for you is what is one thing that you would advise students to know and develop now for what they're going to do in the next five years within any company only the next five years a dedicated skill or knowledge no. Well, it can be a hard skill, a soft skill. It can be a philosophy. What is one thing that you recommend that students take with them today for the next five years? I think and this relates a bit to, to what um, Edward said in the beginning, just leading yourself and also knowing, uh, being proactive and knowing yourself. Maybe I now moving myself in, in the shoes. What I think could be a really good step or what I would advise everyone is like really... Um, learn your strengths. I think there's also um, free versions out there to really self-reflect and do those, uh, run those um, um, questionnaires to really understand where are you right now? What are, what are your strengths and what are your goals? Because if you don't have any goals, it's hard to move forward and and to to act upon that. So really like some yeah, self-reflection on and and yeah self-positioning of where are you, what you want to work and what are your career goals for the next uh, five years? Maybe this is a good starting point, uh, what I would advise. Okay, so taking stock or an analysis of where you are now, where you want to go and what you need to get there in the sort of short term. And then Mr. Munz, the question for you is a little bit different. Um, Our our students are the ones who just are going to start with us are around 18 and the ones that end with us with their masters or somewhere between 18 and 27. So what are some of the things that our students from 18 to 27 can do today so that when they're in their 40s or 50s, their CV can land on a desk like yours because they're in high leadership positions by that time? What can they start doing now for then? Mm. other than coming to an international business school Ah, which we know it it maybe sounds uh, bold don't try to be average please be always excellent in everything you do and do it with heart passion compassion and uh, focus yeah so stay true to yourself and um, keep a very positive attitude because that's all about. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Julia Transberg from Infineon and Mr. Ewald Manz from Odgers Bernstein for being with us today, for speaking to our students, for speaking to our stakeholders, and for being so authentic and approachable. We uh, would very much appreciate you taking the time to speak to us, and we wish you a lovely day. Thank you much. It was a great pleasure. And I hope to see some of your students coming up and knocking at my door. We hope so too. Thank you so (laughs) much. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye.